My question is, I'd like to know how I can fill my heart with the word of God enough that my instinctive reactions actually honor him. This question was prompted because I was just giving report to someone in the hospital and out of nowhere, I just said a curse word and I was like, kind of taken aback because if maybe if I thought about saying it, I could have controlled it, but it just instinctively came out. And I was just, just like, how is that still so much in my heart? Like I need, I want more of the word of God so that my actions can actually honor him and not be instinctively still so carnal and still so not, you know, not in line with what he says his children should be. So I just, that's one of my main questions. And also in light with that, I think that it's connected with the other thought is in being around people, I feel like there's a over there's a fear of being just being a child of God and speaking in love the truth that seems to, how do I break out of that? And I think part of that is having more of the word in me. So how do I fill myself up with the word of God where I actually, in my reactions, respond accordingly to honoring him with my words and deeds and how I conduct myself and also um, being unafraid to be salt and light, be able to be um, speak the truth and love instead of the conversations that are so not in line and just kind of being quiet because I fear is there. Well, that just before um, Racine goes into this question, because it's quite, it's quite, a, uh, quite a big one. But I think what, what, what you're really talking about, which is very, um, which is a challenge that faces everyone, is how to remove corrupt communication. You know, because you mentioned that so what came instinctively from your mouth was, you know, an unwholesome word or an unwholesome talk. Or, and, that, and you mentioned later about, you know, how can you make sure that your conversations, what comes naturally out of your mouth, is something that glorifies God, right? And, um, and thank you for that question, because that is a very practical day-to-day -day question that, you know, if we want to honor Jesus in our lives, well, you know, people see us, they hear us every day. Are our words bringing people closer to Jesus or further away from Jesus, our words and our actions? So thanks um, for that question. I think it's very, very, very key. Question. Yeah. Very, very important question. But I want to thank her for something, because she, she had the answer, because she said, fill my heart. Mm. And that's very the issue is, the question is, what is the source of our words and actions? Why somebody can speak positively about a specific situation and another person in that same situation will speak negatively or act negatively? Let's first go to the, the cause, the root cause of what causes us to speak negatively, what causes us to act negatively. Let's start first with what Jesus said. Jesus gave it a clue. Let's go to the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 17 to 19. I want to read quickly. Ephesians, chapter 4, from verse 17. The recommendation of Paul, it says, Yes, he said, I'm reading from the New King James. For I say therefore and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk, in the futility of their mind. Now, why did he say that? Let's listen to the next verse following. He said, having their understanding darkened. Why? Because alienated, separated from the life of God. Because of the ignorance that is in them. Let's decode those three, 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 three words. Number one, so why are they walking in the future of their thinking? Number one, because they have lack of understanding. Their understanding is darkened. Their consciousness is darkened. Why is it darkened? Because they are separated from the life of Christ, the life of the Holy Spirit, the light of light. Why? Because of the ignorance that is in them. Because of the blindness of their hearts. And that's why we have to be very careful. When the heart is blind, when the heart is heavy, you cannot think, think well. You cannot speak well and act right. That's just exactly what the demon, devil, what Satan and devil want to do. They will hit your mind with all thoughts, negative thoughts, 
So when you are overwhelmed by these negative thoughts and you hearken to the thoughts, you lose control and do what you're supposed to do. In this world, we are exposed to these things. You are exposed to thoughts and things that violate your conscience every day. But you don't run away from them. You have to overcome them. And that's the promise of the Bible, that one. Negative thoughts may come to everyone. Why? Because when you are exposed to the world, as I explained to you uh, uh, some hours ago, what you hear from people, what you see can affect your mind and affect your future actions. If you see something bad, negative, as you have experienced, immediately that will influence your thoughts. So now, if you act on that thought, if you allow that thought to be too big, to dominate you, definitely you may act negatively. If somebody insults you, for example, you heard a word, you know what you hear, insult, to provoke you. That will affect your thought, affect your emotion. So if care is not taken, you can respond back to them. And that's the worst. And that's what the devil wants. He wants to provoke you to lose control and act out of character and commit the sin. That's provocation. They provoke Jesus every day with such bad words. This is bad. This is, but Jesus came, kept, kept his calm. So now the question is, how can I have the control the Holy Spirit is talking about? So when you face negative situation and you don't allow them to take over your mind and to cause you to speak back. And this happened to many homes today. Many homes, many families are affected because of words. We have to be careful of our words. Words can make and then make. War starts with words. Love starts with words. That's what the Bible said. David prayed, Lord, set a watch upon my lips. In the Psalm 19, my tongue control today. Help me to evaluate each thought and guide each word I speak. Now, what is the cause of negative thoughts or negative actions? Now we go back to what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 12, verse 34. The Lord gives clearly a clue. Matthew chapter 12. Go back to Matthew chapter 12 from verse 34. Let's listen to the Lord what he says. Yes. Jesus said to them, Do the vipers, how can you being evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Let's the last sentence. Out of the abundance of our hearts, our mouth speaks. The heart. If somebody has a tendency to speak negatively, it's because his heart is pointed to that way. If somebody speaks positively a word of faith, it's because his heart is that way. Where your treasure, where your focus is, there is your heart. That's why you have to be very careful. You can be here physically, but your body can travel to, to east, south, east. One second, by your thoughts. If you are in a conversation and you are worried about something you're thinking about, People can speak, but you don't know what they say because your spirit is far. Your attention is gone. Your focus is gone. Your focus is important. Jesus is saying it to us that one's input determines your output. What comes into your heart? What comes out of it? I continue reading verse 35. This is what Jesus said. A good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, brings forth good things. And the evil man, out of the evil treasure, brings forth evil things. That's why we say, you are what is in your heart. You have to be very, very careful of our heart. Our heart is the warehouse of our words. <laughs> our heart is the source of all things. When Jesus, I told you, God looks at the heart of man. Our actions, God does not judge your actions. God judge the motivation of your actions. When Jesus looked at a situation to give right judgment, he would not look what the person has done. He would look to see the motivation behind it. What propelled the person to do this? And he gave us a clue in Matthew chapter 5, verse 28 to 29. Let me go back. 
Matthew chapter 5. Where is it? Thank you. Yes. Verse 28. Jesus said, But I say to you, whoever looks at a woman in lust for her has already committed adultery with her in her heart. Jesus never judges our action on the outside, but the heart, the heart, the heart. You may see somebody doing something that seems bad on the outside. But God is looking at the motivation behind it. Whether he brings judgment on the person or not. When you see somebody who is drinking alcohol, alcohol, he cannot, he's a drunkard, he's misbehaving. When Jesus looked at the person, the act of taking it or misbehaving is bad. But Jesus sees that person as a victim because it's an addiction. If the spirit is causing the person to do it, that person needs help, needs deliverance to get himself back because his discretion is overwhelmed. He loses control. He needs to be delivered. He needs to be helped. The question is, what is the state of your heart? What is the state of our heart? What is a good heart? A heart controlled by the word of God or a heart controlled by negative things? So this means your focus is important. Where you set your heart is important. If you set your heart on things that are negative, you're exposed to bad news, bad things, definitely it will influence your heart. It will influence your thought. And if you act on it, you have a problem. So the question we answered previously showed the two kinds of man, the natural man and the spiritual man, which Paul described very well in Romans chapter 8, from verse 6. He said, The carnally minded man sets his affection on the things of the flesh. But the spiritually minded man sets his affection on the things of the above. So to be spirit, to be carnally minded is death, but to spiritual mind is life and peace. What makes the difference? Your focus. So now we have, as we have just said, the natural man that behave emotionally. You allow the emotion to control you. Definitely, if you face something that is against your emotions, you will react. You're going to get angry, that like anger, and act out of character, and that can destroy the relationship. The question is, we are not called to run away from them. We are called to face them and to overcome those things. Negative thoughts will come whether you like it or not. If negative thoughts come to you, the question is, how do you react to that thought? So if bad thoughts come to create trouble between you and your company or whatever, refuse to put those thoughts into words. Don't speak them out. Never, never speak them out. What you should do, begin to meditate in your heart, the word of God. Don't act on the thoughts. If those negative thoughts come and you are still thinking the thoughts of God, you are still the righteousness of God, you are in the presence of God. But if you act on your word and you speak it out, then it's done. Negative thoughts may come and persist to stay in your mind, your heart. But if you resist them, if you refuse to voice them out, they will die and born. Your mind will be renewed with the word of God. So the only way to overcome them is to renew your mind with the word of God. The spiritually minded person, his mind is renewed. He thinks the things that are pure. Philippians chapter 4 verse 8 says, Whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, Think about such thing. Mean, set your mind, your heart towards the things that are pure. That's the word of God. What can purify you from negative thoughts is to meditate the word of God. Jesus said in John 15 verse 3, you are already pure because of the word I have spoken to you. Now, there is a battle between negative and positive as long as we live on this earth. There is a battle between negative thoughts and positive thoughts as long as we live in this earth. That's why I come back to this picture. I show you here. We are in the world, but we are not a part of it. As long as you are physically in this earth, you will be exposed to things that are contrary to the word of God. Things that violate your mind, your conscience, that will happen. But you have to overcome them. 
How do we overcome that? By the renewal of our heart and our mind. So, what do we do now? We have the old man, the natural man, and we have the new man, that is Christ. The old man is the man that fights all the time, kindly minded, what people say affect him. He spends his time lamenting because his life is centered on how he is doing himself. What others do to him, he's comparing himself with others all the time. But the spiritually binding man, he does not measure himself by himself. His strength comes to the Lord. Whatever you say to him, he will examine it in the light of God's word. Because his strength comes from the Holy Spirit, not from man. Now, the natural man, we all know, he works controlled by his natural thoughts. But the spiritually minded person is different. Let's go to the book of Colossians to explain to us. Colossians chapter 3, verse 2. How do we do? That's the advice Paul gives us to overcome all these negative thoughts. Colossians chapter 3. Book of Colossians, yes. Uh -huh, I said, Set your mind on the things above, not on the things on the earth. That is the key. Set your mind, set your heart on the things that are from above, eternal things. And that's the word of God. What is pure? What is lovely? The commandment of Jesus. Read the word of God. Meditate the word of God. Apply the word of God. When you are meditating the word of God, it does something in your life. When you are meditating the word of God and read the Bible, you are training yourself to speak right. Because Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. When the word of God dominates your heart and dominates your mind, it will influence your action, locations, and behaviors. When you are in a negative situation or you have fight at home, please go to the Bible, go to the prayer room. Don't answer back. Take the word of God. Meditate on God's promises. That will renew your mind. God's word will refresh your mind to think what is right in the sight of God. And then God's spirit will give you the strength to be self-controlled. Not to react negatively. You will react positively. Positively. This is what the Bible called the offensive and defensive weapons of righteousness. The word of God. So Paul said... Colossians said, put on the new man. Who is the new man? Then we we'll go to verse 8. He says, sorry, I'm coming back to my end. Right? Yes, okay. Uh -huh. But now, you yourself, you are to put off these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another, since you have put on, you have put off the old man with his deeds. And I have put on the new man, verse 10, who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created us. God's word reflects his character. So our words reflect Christ's character in us. The word you speak determines whom you are. The word just reflect your belief that is in your heart. And as we learned from the prophet, what T.B. Joshua said, in the old quote of the said, that with your word, you constantly paint a public picture of your inner self. Meaning with the word, you are reflecting who is inside of you. What kind of heart you possess. But we will face that. But what happened? Don't act negatively. Don't act on it. Get your mind renewed. And don't respond back. How you must do that? Think first. Arrest your heart. When you know that, if you cannot control your situation, control your attitude. Control your mind. Arrest your thoughts first. When your heart is at peace, is at rest, and the Holy Ghost come, you'll be able to think right and act right and do what is right in the sight of God. So, I encourage you to read Ephesians chapter 4, verse 22 to 
to verse 24, where Paul described the differences between the two men, the new man and the old man. So reading the Bible, controlling your meditation. Why do you read the Bible? We help you to dominate your actions and location. So if you think right, you act right. If you speak right and think right, you will act what is right. The only way to do it is to allow God's word to dominate your heart, to dominate your mouth, and to dominate your whole being. And you will speak the word of God, the word of grace, the word of truth, positive word all the time. Positive thinking through meditation, positive talking, confessing the word of life, and positive acting. God's word will renew your mind to think right, and God's spirit gives you the strength to do what is right. These are our root in God. Yeah, and I think... I just want to give a, a personal example of that because um, your, your question really touched me and I just want to encourage you that you're on the right step because you, the fact that you're conscious, you're conscious that you don't want to be saying negative words or maybe speaking too much or, or you know, things that are not from God coming out of your mouth. That's the first step because that consciousness comes from the Spirit of God. And, um, you know, if I can give you a personal example of this, I mean... Definitely in our in our, our training for many years under Prophet T.B. Joshua, you know, one of the, the things he, he always used to tell us is, you know, if, if, for example, let's say you talk too much, if that's a weakness that you have, you know, your weakness could be anything, you know, if, if, if your weakness is talking too much, you know, if every, every day, you know, you, you have that consciousness of, oh, I don't want to talk too much, I don't want to talk too much. After talking, you, 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 feel, you, you feel that, you feel guilt, you feel, oh, I'm not condemned, I'm not supposed to say that. You start praying, you realize that it actually draws you closer to God. Because every time you're more conscious that you don't want to talk too much, so you actually find yourself coming to God more. God, please forgive me, help me, strengthen me. Meaning that you can't do it in your own strength. You have to depend on God. And so in that process... God's strength is made manifest in your weakness. And actually, you become more conscious of your words than someone that maybe doesn't have that weakness. And then God can actually use your words to speak and bless those around you. And that's a personal um, example I've, I've, I've seen in my life. And what Racine was saying about the, you know, the new man, that's what it is. It, it's from the inside out, being renewed in, in, the, in the knowledge of God. So I want to encourage you that you're on the first step. Even if it might be like, oh, I keep saying these things, I keep thinking, I keep saying these things, continue to fight it. Continue to, like, like Racine said, don't let that word come out. Let it die unborn. Let that thought die unborn. It will continue to take you to the feet of Jesus, wrestling with that weakness. God will see your, your genuine desire to change. God will come to your rescue. And then don't be surprised that that weakness that you have, God will turn it into strength for his glory. Because you'll be so conscious of your words that your words will now be a blessing to those around you. So please, don't run away from them. <laughs> don't run away from it. We don't run away from, from, from tests and trials. We overcome by Christ. When, the, when you say, let the person that sees you cause you to speak negatively. Let him see in you something that will cause him to repent, mm. to regret. Because when you don't respond the way they did, they will say, ah, this woman, I did all this to you and you never responded back. Okay. Yeah? I'm expecting you to, to send me away, but you're helping me. That's the offensive weapon of righteousness. Love is your weapon against hatred. Humility, your weapon against humility. So, not run away from them. Prepare your heart, pray, and God will give the strength. When your heart is ready, instead of negative, you speak positively. Your attitude will talk. Attitude of Christ Jesus. And the person will say, hey, I'm sorry. That is it. Let your light shine. We are called to make a difference by our attitude, by our character, reflecting that Christ truly lives in us. Amen. Thank wow. you.